Welcome to Rethink, the podcast that empowers you to challenge your existing beliefs and embrace new, more productive ways of thinking. Here at Rethink, we believe that the key to self-fulfillment lies in shattering old thought patterns and adopting new mindsets that support personal growth and empowerment. With expert guests and thought leaders from a wide range of fields, we explore strategies and insights that can help you achieve success and fulfillment in all areas of your life. From relationships to career, business ownership, and health, you are the source of your own success. We're just here to help you tap into your true potential and create a brighter future. So join us on the journey of personal growth and empowerment, and let's rethink what's possible for our lives. Today on Things You Should Know, we're going to be talking about the many benefits of yoga. Stick around. Here at Things You Should Know Podcast, our focus varies from commonly asked questions like, what are the top email apps for iPhone users? Or how much does it cost to go to Disney World anyway? To the trending topics of the day, such as, are taxes going up or down? And who's Elon Musk? We shed light on things you probably have always wondered about, but you never got around to investigating them yourself. This podcast brings you the answers to your most commonly asked questions and makes you smarter just by listening. Information empowers, and the more information you have, the better decisions you can make, and ultimately, your quality of life is based on the decisions you make. So, Thanks for joining the discussion and make sure that you subscribe today and not miss out on any future episodes of Things You Should Know. Hey guys, welcome to Things You Should Know. My name is Kelly and I'm your host and it's my pleasure as always to welcome you into the podcast and to the studio Great show planned today. One of my favorites because I'm a big uh, yoga head, a yogi, and we're going to be talking about the benefits, the many benefits of yoga. Uh, and I wanted to bring this to you for a number of reasons. Number one, because on this podcast, one of the things that I believe, and I think you would be- you believe it as well because you seem to be uh, following and listening on a regular basis, is that you're concerned and you're interested in ways to improve your quality of life. And so what good would it be to have a, uh, you know, great financial outlook on your life, but then your health is really, really poor and really, really struggling. Uh, you want to move in succession and in progression, one with the other. So heart health, body, mind, all of that goes together. And I've been practicing yoga for about 10 years. I have a home um, practice. And sometimes I go into different studios, but obviously we all know with uh, the unpleasantness in the last year or so that that's sort of been confined. So I'm going to, uh, before the end of the show today, I'm going to give you some tools that I use, some free and some paid that can assist you if you're interested in developing your own home yoga practice. I'm going to also give you some personal benefits from my end, but I'm also going to be, as I do, cross-referencing about three different articles. Uh, one comes from healthline.com. The other comes from yogajournal.com. And the last comes from harvardhealth.com or health.harvard.edu. So I'm going to post all these on our uh, Facebook page and our Facebook group. And if you've not liked and joined there, please make sure you do so. Everything that we talk about here on the podcast is always in its entirety in terms of the articles posted in our Facebook group. So first timers, thank you guys so much for joining us. It's my pleasure to have you in today. And I know you're going to learn something uh, after you know, you listen today, uh, go back through. Uh, we've got plenty of other very good titles in our catalog, in our archive, and I'm sure you want to listen and do some binge listening. But before you forget, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast because the next time we have some new content out, which will be in 48 hours, you can be the first to know and the first to listen. All right, guys, let's jump into it. I've mentioned to you before, you know, at the beginning, that I've been practicing yoga for about 10 years. And I, um, well, l- let me go back a little further than that. 
So I am 50 years old. I just turned 50. And in my 30s, uh, even, well, let me even go back further than that. I grew up an athlete, so I played football mainly most of my life. And once I got to college, all of that sort of ceased. And then I got married in my 20s, my mid-20s. And I became a father early on. And so it was work and family and so forth. I very rarely worked out. Uh, in my thirties, I began to put on weight. And when I say put on weight, my body weight for the most part, I'm not a big person. I'm six foot tall and currently I weigh 182 pounds. Now in my thirties, uh, right when I got married, I was 185 pounds and I began to work out and my workout then was, you know, free weights and things like that. So I put on some masks. I was not a plant-based person at that time. So God knows what I was eating. And so I got up to about 215 at one point. I got up to about 215 at one point, probably in my early 30s, early to mid 30s. I was at my heaviest, about 215 to 216. I had a number of um, issues sleeping. I had, uh, well, I, I'll, I'll be very transparent as well. One of the issues had nothing to do with my heart health. It had more to do with the way that I was sleeping. So I was sleeping on my stomach. I was a stomach sleeper and my chiropractor educated me as to why that is bad for me. And now I'm a side and back sleeper. So that's gone. But the majority of the other issues I was having in terms of cardio and just sheer displeasure with the way that I look and felt most of the time and low energy levels had to do with my diet, number one. And then my regimen for um, body upkeep or exercise, number two. So in my mid 30s, I began to uh, do P90X. So many of you may have heard of Tony Horton and P90X. And so I did P90X pretty religiously for almost six years. And if you know anything about P90X, it is not, I repeat, easy. It is not easy. But one of the things that P90X brought to me was an awareness of yoga and Pilates. I had never done either of those uh, solo on my own. I had never thought about yoga or Pilates until I was doing P90X. Well, during uh, P90X and the classes that I would take during, you know, yoga and Pilates, what I noticed is that I was so tight. I could not bend down and touch my, I, I mean, it was, I wasn't even close to touching my toes. My hamstrings were so tight. My shoulders were tight. My neck was tight. I had headaches. I, I'm telling you, I was tight, tight, tight. And many people are because they don't stretch on a daily basis. Now, I could talk about this subject for a large amount of time, and I'm not going to do that. Uh, I want to give you some science on why yoga is good for you. I wanted to give you some background on why it has been good for me where I was versus where I am today. In my mid-30s, P90X, quite honestly, is rigorous. And I would get up every morning before work. I would work out. P90X is usually the, the version I was doing. And this is the version three. They're 30 minutes or so workouts before when I first started doing P90X, they were about an hour and, and, it, and it's pretty rigorous and it can be a lot on your joints. So I knew the older that I got that I wanted to be kind to my body. So I wanted to lessen the amount of pressure on my joints, uh, hence uh, lessen the amount of potential fluid that I could be creating on my own with my joints. So yoga became my go to exercise. Now, lest you think that yoga is just sheerly meditation and sitting and different postures, yoga is very in, can be very intense and, and yoga requires a great amount of endurance, cardio and strength as well. And so from a body weight standpoint, you can get as good or better workout and toning with yoga than you can with weights. And the older I got, I wanted to have something that I could do that I wanted to do on a daily basis that was going to be kind to me and to my body. So that's why I do yoga. And in addition to that, there are some spiritual uh, uh, components of it that uh, I've incorporated that work well with where I am spiritually. We're not necessarily going to get into that today. Today, we're just going to be talking about, you know, some spiritual aspects of 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 um 
uh, heart and, and mind matter that help you in terms of anxiety and depression, but mostly physically what yoga can can do for you in the event that you're on the on the ropes and you're thinking about perhaps, uh, you know, creating your own home practice. So yoga, as we know, it is an ancient practice. It usually includes a form of meditation and a form of what we can kind of call exercise here, for lack of a better term. Now, there are a number of types of yoga, but I think, I think, and I've cross-referenced this a couple of times, that the Hatha yoga, which is H-A-T-H-A, uh, it combines styles of yoga, is probably the most common that you see in Western society, in the, in the U.S., now, of course, if you are in the in the East and Mid East and places like that where this originated, then is in its more pure form and uh, tied a little bit more tightly to some religious practices and so forth and so on. We're not going to get that specific today. So half the yoga folks focuses on uh, what yogis call pranayama. And these are terms that you'll use. And I've heard it so many times. These are terms that you'll use as you get into the practice and you'll understand that this means breathing control exercise. I never understood how important, how vital our breath was to our being. And really, I never understood what our breath represents. We're going to do another podcast for that because I'll get all off into the spiritual side of this. Um, the pranayama or the hatha yoga is usually uh, followed by a series of asanas, and these are basically yoga postures. This is, you know, the majority of the practice, different postures. And then it usually ends up in what's called a um, savasana, savasana. So this is a resting period, usually when you're flat and you're grounding and you're allowing your body to receive all of its practice for that day and to determine how you feel after these uh, breathing exercises and after these postures. So there are a number of things that um, are, are benefits of yoga. So number one, um, a better body image. Just remember the goal, the goal during yoga practice uh, is to to challenge yourself physically, but not necessarily feel overwhelmed. And your goal also may be to connect to your to your inner self and with the idea and the acceptance of becoming one with that during, you know, during this practice. And that's really what caught my attention about yoga. Now, yoga develops inner awareness. It focuses your attention on your body's ability at the present moment, and it centers you. You've heard these terms on this podcast before, mindfulness, meditation, and things like that. Well, this is what yoga does. It centers you, and it allows you to focus on the present moment. It helps you to develop breath and strength of mind and body, which both are important. Um, Some other benefits. It can help you become a mindful eater. This is very key. Uh, One of the things I notice is that uh, the more, um, uh, let me say this in a in a way that (laughs) doesn't doesn't uh, sound off putting, but as you become more aware, let's do it this way: as you become more aware, you become more conscious. uh, You will reconsider many things, many things, because remember. Uh, our saying here at this podcast is that uh, we want to become informed for a reason. We want to become empowered with information. Why? Because we know that information can help us make good decisions or better decisions. I will tell you, and it's nothing take a rocket scientist to know this, but in my 20s, I had less information uh, versus now. Uh, I probably wasn't making as better or as good of decision as I would now. Um, I have more life experience now versus then. So I expect from myself to make better decisions. And it ultimately, those better decisions will equal into a better quality of life. So if you are going through the process of becoming more mindful and more conscious, then it stands to reason that all of the processes around what you're doing with your life, including what you're putting in your body, you reconsider these things. Why? Well, think about it. The primary reason 
you feel the way you feel. Let's not talk about mental stress. Okay, we, we, we'll set that to the side. But physically, the primary reason you feel the way you feel are a combination of two things. Number one, what you're putting in your body. That could be liquids and food. And two, what you're doing with your body as it relates to exercise or the lack thereof. So, for example, if you see me and I'm obese, I'm obese. Uh, you can make a certain mm, judgment. It wouldn't be nice, but many people do that, unfortunately. If you see me and I'm very thin, you can make a certain judgment. Also wouldn't be nice, but many people do that. Um, My point is, um, as you become more conscious, then you will begin to say, okay, I'm not feeling as much energy as I like to feel. Okay. So how do we correct that? Oh, I got it. What if I exercise? Because many people think I don't have a lot of energy, so I'm going to rest. Energy doesn't come from resting. Energy comes from creating the energy. Inside of you is a solar, like the sun, a solar plexus that creates energy for the body and it must shine. And once it shines, your energy, your energy centers can turn on and you will feel vibrant. I don't care how much sleep you're getting. Another podcast also, but you've got to learn how to turn on uh, these energy centers in your body. If you want to get more energy. Now, if you're just tired because you stayed out all last night, yeah, you need to take a nap. But if you say from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, I just don't feel like I have the amount of energy I like to have. This is not because you're tired physically. This is because you're not generating energy internally. And yoga can help you with that. Now, you can also see a boost in weight loss. Uh, It helps you uh, from a cardiovascular standpoint, which really is the long term goal. We don't have to be. Let me say this very clearly. Some of us, and this was me, uh, have predicted our lives and where we will be in certain years. And one of the portions of our lives that most people have accepted just to be on the decline is this uh, senior area of our lives when we get 70 and above. Well, hopefully by now through social media, you've seen the aging group of raw vegans, vegetarians, vegans, and, and, and people who are yogis who say, no, 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 that doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. And the reason it is, is because of A, B, and C. But if you can change this now, if you're in your thirties and you begin to change the way you think about what you're putting in your body and you begin to change what you're doing with your body, then your body will perform much longer and much better. You don't have to be a senior citizen that is um, in declining health and on a bunch of prescriptions. And I sound like I'm preaching a little bit, so I'm going to move on to the next point because I think you have it. But let's go through uh, some benefits. These are scientifically proven, by the way, uh, of yoga. Number one, and we can all use this, it helps to de- de-stress you. It it literally de-stresses you. I've done this, I've done it, I've done it. I will have a long day of work. I'll, I'll give you an idea of my practice. I practice in the morning and I also practice in the evening. I'm not suggesting to you that you have to do it twice a day. I've, I'm doing it twice a day because I want to and because it makes me feel good and, and it and it works for my body and my schedule. Now, if you have to drive to work and, and you've got a bunch of your single parent when you're getting home, you're tired. I get it. I'm only telling you what I'm doing. Now, I wasn't always doing this. Um, so anyway, uh, I practice in the morning as I get up. It's part of my morning routine. And I practice at night uh, when I go down. And I usually do about 30 minutes in the morning and about 35, 40 minutes at night. Uh, so anyway, it helps you distress. Number one, it can help you de-stress. Yoga is known to promote relaxation. This is one of the reasons why I like to do it at night, because it does help me sleep. Now, there are studies showing the decrease that it decreases the secretion of cortisol. This is the primary stress hormone. There are a couple studies done. I'm going to tell you about one. 
a three month yoga program, women had significantly lowered their levels of cortisol. One study demonstrated the effects of uh, yoga on stress by following 24 women who perceived themselves as emotionally distressed. After they practiced yoga, they were tested again and their levels of cortisol were down. They had lower levels of stress, anxiety, fatigue, and also depression. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's an offer we thought you'd be interested in. Are you looking to develop and create stunning coursework? Uh, launch your stunning academy website in a snap. You can choose from among 50 plus designer made, ready to go, industry specific site templates to launch your website fast and with confidence. It's very simple, very powerful. They're flexible courses. You can wave goodbye to dull educational content. There are countless ways to package and distribute your learning content. Create listed or private courses that can be paid or free courses, or you can drip. Feed your content to build and to nurture your audience the way that you want. You can create compelling and interactive courses, leverage the most rich library of learning activities, and undoubtedly the most customizable course player in the market to build flexible learning experiences to keep your listeners engaged. And lastly, be the boss of your content and design your final course product exactly as you envision it. Preview it as you build it. In real time, get it up and running fast than you ever have imagined. Why don't you go down the show notes, guys, today and uh, click on Learns World. If you're interested in building courses that matter, you can monetize, create memberships, create courses and create passive income for yourself. So support our sponsor, Learns World. Now, what's the other thing? Anxiety. Anxiety and depression usually are kind of brother and sister. When you find one, you can kind of find the other. One promotes the other. Same thing. Many people begin practicing yoga as a way to cope with anxiety. There's another study. 34 women diagnosed with anxiety disorder participate in yoga classes twice weekly for two months. At the end of the study, those who practice yoga had significantly lowered their anxiety from the control group. A second study followed 64 women with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. This is categorized by severe anxiety and also fear of a particular traumatic event. You hear this a lot of times with soldiers, PTSD. So after 10 weeks, these 64 women who participated in the study once weekly had fewer symptoms of PTSD. 52% of the participants no longer met the criteria of PTSD. Okay, so anxiety and depression. Number three, it can reduce inflammation. And as you know, inflammation is the cause of a lot of sickness or dis-ease, dis-ease of our bodies. Inflammation is normal, a, a very normal response, though, to, from your immune system. But chronic inflammation can contribute to the development of uh, pro-inflammatory diseases, such as, you guessed it, heart disease, diabetes, and also cancer. In 2015, there was a study that divided 218 participants into two groups, uh, those who participated in yoga regularly and those who didn't. And then both groups perform moderate and strenuous exercises to induce stress. At the end of the study, the individuals who practiced yoga had lower levels of inflammatory markers than those who didn't. So number three is it can help reduce inflammation. And that's important because if you look at the numbers of folks that are um, Dying due to heart disease, diabetes, and cancer, uh, a practice like this can really help. The next thing, it could help improve your heart health. We talked a little bit about that in part three. Uh, From pumping blood throughout the body to supplying tissues with important nutrients, the health of your heart obviously is essential to your overall health. Studies show that yoga may help improve heart health and reduce risk factors associated with heart disease. Now, one study found um, over 40, uh, uh, there was a study that participants who were over 40 years of age participated in, and they practiced yoga for five years. They had a lower blood pressure level and a pulse rate than 
than their peers who didn't do this. Okay, so they're 40 years or older and they have been practicing for five years and they tested their blood pressure and their heart rates. Very simple to do. I, I, I get blood all the time. One of the things you have to do is get your heart, you know, your blood pressure checked. And, of course, your heart rate and your iron. And they tell me all the time, your, 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 your blood pressure is great. It's absolutely great. Are you a swimmer? I had a nurse ask me one time, are you a swimmer? No, I'm, I am not a swimmer. High blood pressure is associated with major heart problems. High blood pressure is associated with major heart problems. One of the major causes. Um, so heart attacks and stroke are caused by high blood pressure. The key is what's causing the high blood pressure. It's usually a stress-related trigger, and you have to get into to that piece as well. All right, so a study followed 113 patients with heart disease, and looking at the effects of the lifestyle changed um, Looking at the effects of a lifestyle change that included one year of yoga training, one year of yoga training combined with some dietary modifications and stress management, participants saw a 23% decrease in the total cholesterol and a 26% decrease in bad LDL cholesterol. The progression of heart disease stopped in 47% of these patients. Okay, so this suggests that not only will yoga help you, but it's got to be a combination of a physical practice, a mental element. But you've got to do your part in terms of what you're putting in your body. Now, I'm being real ginger, but I think you guys have listened to me long enough to know that I'm a plant based person. And I, I, I've noticed and I'm going on uh, five. This is my fifth year. September will be my fifth year. Here's what I would say. And I'm saying this with peace and love. Uh, there are three things that I don't necessarily talk to people about. Uh, politics, <laughs> religion, and what they eat. People are super sensitive about what they eat. Some people really love food and fried this and, you know, deep fried that. And I get it. I used to eat fried chicken. It tastes good. Or bacon. It tastes good. I get that. But these are the same people who have some sort of gripe when it comes to how much money we're spending in health care or why they don't feel good. And I don't understand why these prescriptions cost so much. Listen, you can affect your own positive change by being attentive to what you put in your body. And quite honestly, what comes from the earth fits well in your body. It's scientifically proven. The elements in your body are found in this earth. And the sun, the chlorophyll, these elements that come to us naturally from the sun, if we simply just put them in our body, it will work so much better than a decaying, dead carcass that we've been marketed to that, hey, this tastes good. Or, you know, uh, preservatives and all these other chemicals. So, listen, this is just logical. This is just logical. So if you want to feel better, consider I'm not telling you what to do. You know, I'm not even telling you to believe me. I never tell you to believe me on this podcast. I tell you to listen. Thank you for doing that. But cross reference what I'm saying, because you may think this is BS. Who, who knows where I'm reading from? You, you don't know. One of the first things I told you, very first podcast, don't believe anything anyone says. It's your job to cross reference the information to make it true for you. I'm telling you what I believe to be true, but it may not be true for you. So you cross reference it and you come up with what works best for you. I'm telling you the transition from eating meat to not eating meat is 180 degrees turn. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Here's a podcast we thought you'd like. Hi, it's Tahimia. It's Cam. Rachel. And Amani, your hostesses at The Art of Making It Work, the podcast that knows life doesn't need any help being hard, but sometimes we need a little help making it easier. On our show, we discuss an array of topics ranging from travel to friendships and even finances with a whole lot of girl chat in between. We're here to give you research-based life hacks and initiate discussions to help you and one another navigate this thing called life. So tune in to The Art of Making It Work every Monday for new episodes wherever you stream your podcast content. It's a 180 degrees turn. There's no one on this earth that loved bacon more than I did. 
But when I consider my own longevity, I never try to convince people that bacon was good for you, though. Have you ever seen bacon that's not eaten and just sits there? Have you ever seen pork or some sort of meat that just sits there? God forbid. Have you ever seen shakes or McDonald's fries that just sit there after a while? It's not stuff that you should be putting in your body. Well, let me say that better. It's not stuff that I wanted to continue to put in my body. Okay. I knew it would clog me up. And from a spiritual side, I wanted to be. Uh, a receptor. So those are my reasons for doing it. You've got to determine your own. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm only telling you what I've done. Number five, uh, improves your quality of life. There was another study. I told you this was scientific. 135 seniors. Seniors were assigned to either six months of yoga, walking, or in a control group. Practicing yoga significantly improved their quality of life as well as their mood. The fatigue compared to the other groups. In other words, it generated more energy. Why? Because your energy comes from your solar, your solar plexus, what's inside of you. Your energy centers are inside of you. There's another study that followed women with breast cancer undergoing chemo. Yoga decreased the symptoms of chemo, such as nausea and vomiting, while also improving their overall quality of life. Number six, uh, it may fight depression may fight depression. We talked a little bit about that in, in, in number one, how it relieves stress. I think stress, anxiety, and depression are all kind of right there together. There was a study in which participants in an alcohol-dependent program practice uh, Kriya, Sudarshan Kriya. This is a type of yoga that focuses on rhythmic breathing. After two weeks, participants had fewer symptoms of depression and lower levels of cortisol. They also had lower levels of ACTH. This is a hormone that's responsible for stimulating the release of that uh, hormone, cortisol. Number seven, you can reduce chronic pain. I'm a witness to this. I'm telling you, my neck was so tight. My shoulders were so tight. I could hardly lift my arms straight up in the air because I had been lifting weights for so long. My muscles were just tight, tight, tight. My hamstrings, most guys that We're around my age because I'm in a fraternity. I would be at so many meetings and I see the way that we all ate and the lack of exercise and all this drinking and different things. Now, I don't really do a lot of drinking, but I could see their body shapes and I could tell they're not exercising. I mean, let's just be honest. So here's somebody was doing P90X, riding bikes and hiking. I couldn't even touch my toes. Why? Because my muscles were so, so tight with yoga and opening up your vessel and open and, and developing better breathing practices, you just feel better. I just felt so much better. So the pain that I had with my neck is now gone. There was a study where 42 individuals uh, with carpal tunnel syn- uh, syndrome, they either received a wrist splint or they did yoga for eight weeks. At the end of the study, yoga was found to be more effective in reducing the pain and improving their ability to grip and utilize that wrist. Number eight, and I've already told you about this one, it can promote better sleep. I was having the dickens trying to sleep, mainly because of my neck. I would fall asleep, but God, when I woke up in the morning, it was as if I was wrestling a bear, and the bear won. And you know how terrible it is to wake up and start your day with a headache? Not cool. So adjustments from my chiropractor, adjustments from sleeping, and then uh, uh, doing yoga before I go to sleep, Listen, every now and then I'll get up to use the restroom, but my body feels so much better in the morning. I don't have any pain. I don't have any tightness. I don't have any stiffness. And I know it's because I've stretched and I've done yoga throughout the day because I've gone to sleep before without doing it. And I can tell a big difference. Number nine, it can improve, obviously, flexibility and balance. Uh, There was a recent study that looked at the impact of 10 weeks of yoga on 26 male college athletes. During uh, doing yoga significantly increased several measurements of flexibility compared to the control group. Now, I can tell you personally, I've said it before, I couldn't even reach down and reach the bottom of my calves, let alone my toes. Now I can completely put the palm of my hands on the floor and bend over with ease. As a matter of fact, I can almost touch my knees with my forehead. Now, this didn't happen in a day. It didn't happen in a month. But I've been practicing for the last 10 years, and I've been pretty consistent with it. Uh, 
And if you want flexibility, if you want to feel good, if you want to be able to sit for long periods of time, if you're on planes or in cars, if you want to be able to walk for long periods of time and not get winded, I'm telling you, yoga can really work for you. Next, this could help improve your breathing. There are multiple breathing exercises in the practice of yoga. Being centered, being in control of your breath is one of the major components of yoga. Um, There was a study, 287 college students took a 15-week class where they were taught various yoga poses as well as breathing exercises. At the end of the study, there was a significant increase in vital capacity, in vital capacity, their ability uh, to breathe and the amount of oxygen coming in and entering their system. Vital capacity is a measure of the maximum amount of air that can be expelled from your lungs. It's especially important for those with lung disease, heart problems, or asthma. Okay? Now, the next thing is that it may relieve migraines as well. A 2007 study, it divided 72 patients with migraines in either a yoga therapy or a self-care group for three months. Practicing yoga led to reductions in headache intensity, headache frequency, and overall headache pain compared to the self-care group. Next, it can promote healthy eating habits. We already talked about that. I'm not going to pound you over the head about that again. And then the last thing it can do is it can increase your strength. Now, here's what I'll tell you. Uh, Many people don't think, let me say that better. Many people don't know a lot about yoga, so they uh, make assumptions. So you may think as yoga, I'm just going to sit and meditate and every now and then I'll twist and stretch my back. Not the case. There are many um, different practices, but there are many different poses within different practices. And what you will see is it requires strength, uh, agility, Balance, all of which helps to combine and center that heart, health, mind, body, uh, spirit, physical together. And there's a sense of oneness. Uh, Let me not forget to provide you with some very key information should you desire to. Hey, Kelly, this all sounds great. How do I practice? All right. So let's talk about some free options. So the first free option, uh, this is how I started. I started online uh, uh, doing yoga uh, and YouTube. YouTube is a fantastic place to find many things. And you guys know that already. Um, Who do I practice with? Um, I practice with Adrian. Um, Yoga with Adrian. That's all you have to do. You go to YouTube, you type in yoga with Adrian. And as I'm telling you this, just be advised. I'm not a, they're not a sponsor of this podcast yet. Um, I'm only providing this to you as information to help you get started on your, on your journey. Uh, so that's the free option. Uh, there are other options as well, paid options. And listen, there are a number of people online that provide yoga, instructional yoga for at home yoga practices. I just happen to like Adrian. I love her delivery. I, I really, I, I, I connect with her, especially for a beginner. Because there's so many, she teaches yoga and has taught yoga for years in class. And now she just happens to bring it to YouTube. Uh, my sense is that she's able to inc- uh, accommodate uh, many different styles, particularly those who are just getting started. Okay, so you don't feel any big pressure. Hey, I, I can't bend all the way over and I can't do these sorts of things. Am I going to be able to keep up? No, she's fine. Um, but like I said, there are many other folks on there that, that can do it as well. Um, paid option. I, I love this website. It's called allomoves.com, A-L-O-M-O-V-E-S.com. Here's why I love Allo Moves. Number one, it's very reasonable. I think when I first started, it was $20 a month, okay, 20 bucks. You're not going to be able to go to yoga class or join a gym or anything like that for $20, okay? And on this particular platform, there are a multitude of mindfulness, yoga, meditation, yoga, fitness, Pilates practices. And there are a multitude and a diverse range of um, of instructors. So you can find your place at your intensity level. It goes all the way from one to five, one being the least, five being the most. So wherever you are in your practice, you can find an instructor that can help you uh, move into your practice uh, in the fashion that you would like uh, to do so. 
So again, the website is Allo Moves, A L O M O V E S dot com. And I think if it's even cheaper than twenty dollars a month if you pay for a full year in advance. I've been with them for three years now. And I progress, you know, I still work with uh, Adrian. I may do uh, her deal in the evening or in the morning, and then I'll switch and do Aloe at night. Uh, again, Aloe has, oh man, it has a, a lot of different things. So as you progress and mature through your practice, you'll want to uh, get a little bit more advanced. And so there, there's a paid option, and it's a pretty reasonable paid option. So I, I, I really hope that you will engage, and I hope this information helps you. So I've gone over several different studies with you here. I'm very passionate about this, as you can see. I'm going to post this on our Facebook page. But I want to encourage um, all of you. And you don't have to be, you know, uh, 50 to start doing this. You don't have to be 30 to start doing this. My daughter and, and both my daughters, actually, have been practicing yoga with me. My oldest is 14. So I started 10 years ago. She was four years old when she started practicing with me. She still does it. She still does it. She's a swimmer, big time swimmer, but she practices yoga as well. And I'm telling you, it is something I think as you get older, your body can appreciate that there's no um, strenuous pushing and pulling. If you do weights, that's fine. I just thought over long periods of time that was going to put more pressure on my joints than I wanted. And I don't want problems with arthritis. I do a lot of work with seniors in my community. And one of the things that I see on an ongoing basis is that seniors uh, every senior that I deal with has arthritis in some shape, form, or fashion. And in addition to that, they all retain water, which means at some point they've injured their joints or didn't take care. They were not flexible enough, and the flow of fluids within their body is stopped up in some way. Okay? One of the major reasons why we have dis-ease of the body, a dis-ease in the body, is because, one, the flow of air in and out of the body, and two, the flow of blood within your vessel. Okay? Those are two things that can keep you here or take you out. The flow of air and the flow of your blood, and I think you know that. Listen, I hope you listen to this again because I think I was going a little fast because I get excited when I'm talking about things I'm really passionate about. But this I'm passionate about and this I wanted to share with you today. And I hope you receive it in such a way that it benefits you and those that are around you. So please make sure that you share, like and comment. Please follow us online if you're not doing it already on our Facebook page. And if you've not done so already, please go ahead and subscribe. OK, I'll see you in about 48 hours with some better. Well, not better, but some newer and just as good content. Thanks. That's all for today's episode of Rethink. We hope that you've enjoyed this exploration of new ideas and perspectives and found valuable insights and strategies that you can apply to your life. Remember, you are the source of your own success and fulfillment. And by embracing new ways of thinking, you can unlock your true potential and yes, create the life that you truly desire. Now, if you've enjoyed this episode, we encourage you to support the podcast by sharing it with your friends, your family members, your loved ones and associates, and even your followers on social media. Also, leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Lastly, don't forget to check out our show notes for free downloads and empowering ebooks that can help you on your journey of personal growth and empowerment. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We look forward to exploring more ideas and insights with you in the next episode of Rethink.